Good afternoon and you join us live for our next Woody Cookout and today we are well very fortunate to be in the beautiful autumn soft rain in an orchard in Herefordshire and the orchard belongs to Newton Court Seidel, very good friend Paul um, who's allowed us to come here today and use some of his amazing cider and we'll be talking a little bit about that um, later on but first of all I want to introduce you to our wonderful Woody chef Sue Goring. So Sue come on in and I want to tell you what we're going to cook so soon. So we have already made um, today what we're going to cook. So explain yeah. to me what's in these wonderful dishes. Okay, well what we've got, um, I've done already this morning, is uh, pork tenderloin okay. with a cider, cream and leek sauce oh. with some caramelised apples as well. Okay, so we're going to show you how to make this on the fire pit. And the other dish, Sue? The other dish, we've got make? some lovely baked apples that have actually got some sugar, raisins and some blackberries that I've actually Local just picked from the hedgerow oh, uh, to the right of me. And we're also going to just serve a lovely simple butterscotch sauce with it. Okay. And really that is just so we've, we've already been tasting this delicious. morning, on your behalf of course. So we're going to start um, doing our cooking now. And so Sue, what are we going to start, what are we going to start with? What we're going to start with is I'm going to get the baked apples into the fire pit okay. so that that will give them sort of 15, 20 minutes to cook through. Okay, so that'll be the time that we're on here. So while Sue's doing that, I'm going to show you actually, I'm going to bring it close and show you what we're going to cook. So you carry on Sue. Okay, so, here, so I've got a, a Braeburn apple and what I want to do is... Hi Chris, thanks for watching. So this is what we're going to make first. Yep. So Braeburn apple. I like to just put a little cut around the circumference of the apple and that just helps to prevent it from exploding if it does get a little bit too hot. Okay. I've got one of these wonderful melon scoopers, you could use a teaspoon or a knife, just to take the, the core out. Okay. So actually I'm just going to put the apple bits on the floor and they'll get picked up when the apples get harvested. The cider, I'm not going to go right the way through. Just going to take all the core out. So that's a really handy tool, isn't it? It's is a great tool, yeah. And you'll have to bear with us. We're looking a little bit damp this morning because, as I said, it's a beautiful soft morning. So we've got a little bit of. Um... It's a bit damp and it's just starting to rain a little bit now. It is. So in my bowl here, I've got a mixture of some raisins. You could use currants, sultanas, mixed dried fruit. Uh, you could put some nuts in it. There's so many different combinations and a little bit of soft brown sugar and then as I said I've got some blackberries oh oops this is what happens when you're cooking in the field so yeah. you just got to go with it <laughs> all falls out my legs yeah. aren't necessarily quite long enough to hold everything <laughs> vertical as well so I've got some blackberries that are just going to pop in there yeah, because this is our harvest cookout. So we wanted to show you some really simple recipes. So our idea is to use very few ingredients, isn't it, Sue? It is today. So top it up with a little bit more sugar and okay. raisins. This is a really lovely treat. And you can put different things in, the, in there as well. You could pop some nuts in if you wanted to. Yeah. And okay. just finally a little knob of butter just on the top. And the rain is coming down. Yeah. So we today are cooking in our 600ml stainless steel fire pit um, with a grill on it. So this is the fire pit that we're using. This is the one that most people have. Um, it's a great size for a family. The grill is really thick so it'll take the weight of lots of things. Today we're going to be using some really thick heavy um, cookware on the top. So you'll just to show you different ways of cooking. So while Sue's just wrapping that up. So I'm just wrapping the apple just in some um, tin foil with some baking paper on the inside and then just another um, layer layer of foil. Okay. And um, those are going to go directly into the fire pit. Okay. There. And it's great just to put it in the embers it because is. of course the fire pit is made of metal so it will retain quite a lot of heat and so that is in the bottom of there. Can you see that? Down into the base. So we're using today, we're cooking on wood from Certainly Wood, our friends in Madley. So we always use um, kiln dried wood or charcoal. So we've had the fire going now for probably an hour or so and we've been adding um, wood to it and even in the rain 
it's been amazing it's kept going and so that's what we're going to be cooking on so sue what have you got there all right now i have got a piece of pork tenderloin okay uh again well, this will be purchased from our local butchers okay uh and it comes like this and you do need to just remove this sinewsy um section um just to help it otherwise it, it just doesn't cook down so okay i've got a very very long knife a lovely sharp knife which our blacksmith has made thank you steve we're trying that out today it might be something that we're going to have in the yes. future so made out of a um a rasp and we've tried some of those before so just taking the little bits off yep, there so okay just off there. yeah it's a little bit tricky with a, a large knife but let's uh, as we've got it we'll try it okay so in this lovely orchard behind i don't know if you can see this is um gasping goose um, the cider apples from here go to make gasping goose and it's the most amazing cider and this is the cider that we're using today so we're really pleased to be actually in the orchard that we're using um, the cider for the recipe of and so this orchard was planted in about 1950 and Paul has been making cider here with his family and for about 19 years now and Paul's going to come try some of these delicious recipes with us in a little while right now I'm just going to go back to the pork I'm just going to okay. season it with some salt and pepper and you could rub a little bit of um, dried sage on there or some okay. fresh sage. Okay. I uh, forgot to bring it this morning. So. Well, so that's the great thing. You can put a little bit on or not. Try it again next time. Yep, it'll be perfect. And uh, where's the salt? Should be here somewhere. So we've just added um, some pepper. Have you just added there, Sue? So? Yes, okay. Yeah. And so our fire is nicely going now, and we've got our baked apples inside. So there we've got putting our salt and pepper on there. Okay. And I'm just going to spray it lightly with some uh, rapeseed oil. And we love rapeseed oil, don't we? we? Rapeseed oil has got a much higher flash point. It, so it has. And always a good idea to put it onto the meat rather than onto the grill itself, although you could do either. And that's just going to go Let's onto the fire pit, onto the grill just to get a nice smoky barbecue flavour going to it. Okay, and how long do you think, I know that you know, people always ask us how long things are going to take to cook and of course every fire is different, some fires are hotter, yep. some are on charcoal, so as a it's, rough guide. When it's nice and brown it's ready. Uh, sounds good to me, right okay. So next up into our, so this is our heavyweight pan. Yep, so I've um, just got a, a Le Creuset, small Le Creuset pan. Okay. And I'm just going to put a blob of butter in the centre there and that just to get nice and melted down. Okay. And so we're going to make something to go with the pork, aren't we? Yes, so this so. is the start of the sauce. Okay. So I've got some shredded leeks. Okay. So lovely leeks fresh from the garden. Wonderful. So it's really great colour. a leek and cream sauce. What a wonderful autumn recipe. It is. Very, very few ingredients. So we'll just let those soften just a little bit before we add the cider. And while I do putting things down, I'm going to just turn the pork over and you can see it's really sizzling away. I'm just starting to, oh, I'm just starting to brown, brown and caramelise. That's oh, lovely. So the leeks in there, we talked about a few ingredients. So what are we going to add in next We're with the leeks? We're going to add some uh, dub, um, whole grain mustard and cider. Right, okay. And we're going to bubble that sauce up and get it really uh, simmering before we put the pork back into it. Right, okay, so we're going to let so it really, reduce. It is so very, very simple. So okay. while we've got a little bit of time, while the pork is um, cooking, I can move on and show you the butter scotch sauce which will go with the baked apples. Wonderful. So I've got another saucepan on here and I've got some butter into the saucepan. Okay. So that's the wonderful thing about our grill. So I'll come in a bit closer so that you can see it there. So that it is um, strong enough to hold um, big pans and you can add saucepans to it as well. And then the grill, you know, you've got your meat cooking on it too. So hi Lindsay, thanks for watching. And Annette. Anita, Chris and Bill, thank you all for tuning in. So I should say at this point, so we have got our lovely um, 
fire pit out or 600 mil out in the orchard today and we would love you to send us pictures of your fire pit in action. So I'm exhibiting at um, Grand Designs Live from the 9th to the 13th of October and I'd love to see you there. And I have some pairs of tickets um, to give away and if you would like to come simply share a picture of your fire pit in action, your woody, um, cooking something or with your friends around and hashtag it woody life, W-O-O-D-E-L-I-F-E -E, on any of our social media or even send us um, a picture by email to Louise at the woody. So Sue, what are you adding okay, next? Okay, right, so butterscotch sauce, the butter is just starting to melt. I've got some um, muscovado sugar, soft brown sugar. Uh, you can use a light brown, you can use a dark brown, it really doesn't matter. Okay. I'm not going into my saucepan. And we just want to melt that all together. So we're cooking over wood and we've got a lovely flame here yep. but not too hot so we're melting butter and sugar um, onto the fire pit making a beautiful butternut but I keep saying butternut butterscotch butternut was last week butterscotch sauce so we're just going to let that melt down and just uh, allow the sugar just to dissolve the um, onion the, the leeks are now just um, softening quite nicely and we had the dilemma of whether we should have put more logs on before we started. Uh, <laughs> um, this is always a dilemma with wood. So we could add some more um, shortly. And of course, if you add more wood um, in the middle of cooking, it's going to smoke because what happens is that all that fresh wood will release the hydrocarbons, um, which is what the smoke is um, um, evaporating off. And when that really gets to a high enough temperature, it ignites and then you get a clear flame again so we will just we'll, 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 play, we'll see uh, we think we're okay so okay. i've got some lovely gasping goose cider okay let's have a look at that yeah so this is some of pool cider made from the apples in this orchard okay and how I'm much we're going to add all that out. i'm basically going to again you can put as much as you like in there so i've, I've you've probably used half a bottle there okay and we're going to allow that to bubble up as well stirring it So we're trying to get this to, to soak up um, the leeks and to reduce a little bit, Sue? Yes, we wanted to reduce uh, a little bit. Um, I'm going to add some whole grain mustard. That's going to go in. Lovely. Let's give that a good stir and just let that really come up to the boil. So it's stopped raining so we have um, set up beautiful sunshine to start with and then we've had um, absolute pouring with rain so Sue and I are a little bit wet this morning <laughs> this afternoon but thankfully it stopped raining so that we can show you so you can see the butter cooking. scotch sauce the, the, the sugar has melted the butter has melted and now what I'm going to do is add some double cream So which are we adding this to? This is going to add to the butterscotch sauce. Okay. So again, just a couple of dollops. Yeah, a bit more than a couple of double dollops. Left, left, leave a little bit for the, uh, the pork. Can you hear that sizzling? So we're just melting the cream into that, aren't we? Yep. And basically that is it you could add a little bit of um, sea salt just to give it a little salted caramel um, flavor okay so that's melting nicely yeah that. or you could just add um, a little bit of lemon juice as well just to sharpen it up that really is quite delicious So you can get the recipes um, from our cookout um, on any of our social media later today or tomorrow. So our social media is at the Woody on Facebook, um, which is what we're on now, or on Instagram, and we're also on Twitter. And so 
the recipes will be up and you can see past recipes as well on YouTube and where we're at and Woody Limited so you can tune in and see and if you've got any recipes that you've tried on your um, Woody that you'd like to share with us please do again send it to louise at thewoody.com and we'll share it all on our Woody Life page right. so it's coming on now Sue it's coming on yeah so I'm going to pop the pork into the sauce okay oh look at that and I'm going to just move that up So we've got a nice temperature now, it's not flaming, so we started our wood fire some time ago, so now there's just a beautiful heat underneath, is. which is melting the butter scotch sauce, yeah. and just put the lid on. on that. And I think whenever we're cooking outside on open fires, I think we're always in too much of a hurry to actually get things cooked and eating, yeah. but actually you need to slow it right down because... Uh, yeah, we're very much into our slow food here, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. It's about being sociable, spending time it with your is. family and friends, and hopefully we're showing you some different recipes that you can sit outside of an autumn evening. I mean, this is a wonderful autumn recipe, very warming, that you'll be able to use on your woody. That's the butterscotch sauce. As you can see, it's just melted. It's a lovely pouring consistency. Okay. You can keep that on the fire just to keep ticking it over, let it bubble up a little bit more. Okay. It's always very important to taste your food. We like that bit. We do. And Paul from Newton Court Cider, come and have a sit down, Paul. I know it's wet, but have a have a perch in because we've said, yeah, just. Yeah. So I'm going to take that off the heat because okay. that really is just lovely. Okay. Um, so I can just show you how to do the apples. We're just starting to rain again now. So Paul, we were saying that this orchard is where the cider that we're using in, um, in this recipe has come from. So you said it was planted in 1950, so would that have been, you know, who would have planted the orchard originally? So what cider, I mean we've been using the Gasping Goose now and my sincere apologies for the pouring rain, but it is your farm. <laughs> so Paul, tell us about um, cider making today and what do you do at Newton Court Cider? Um, and also where people can get hold of it, which is the most important thing. Um, well, uh, in Hereford, uh, Johnny at the Hereford Beer House has uh, got, got our, uh, very finally got our cider in, in uh, their uh, bottle shop. Um, you can also get it from the farm date here. Yeah. Uh, we've had a great summer. Um, been very busy. Um, Ludlow Food Centre. We've also got our uh, cider at the other end of the county. Um, so, here Paul, yeah. hold that. Thank you. <laughs> Sue, let me get one for you as no, well. Alright, we're, we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is why Paul is, um, I'm, now we're really going okay. for the ring. Yeah. I've put these um, apples to caramelise on okay. the hot plate. So what type of apples are these? Because these, these aren't cider apples. Um, no, this is a cox actually. Okay. So I've just put a little bit of um, soft brown sugar on. Okay. Um, and so could you use any type of apple, Sue? You could. You want to use one that's not going to um, blow up and explode. So um, a, a cox is perfect, a Braeburn, or uh, you could use a Granny Smith or something like that. Something right, okay. Got, and it needs to have a little bit of bite to it as well, a little bit of sharpness. So. Okay. Sugar so on top because I'll flip them over in a minute. But the sugar's getting wet. I think everything's getting wet. <laughs> you're lucky if you're watching this from the comfort of your own home. <laughs> We're out in the field. So, so Paul, what type of cider um, do you make? So the so Gasping Goose is the one that, that we're the using. Gasping So a real mixture. Yeah, years ago they planted the recipes. 
So you have ah. lots of different types of uh, apples that were gathered, and that, that was that was the, the long and the short of it. Is, you know, they knew what they were doing years ago. Right. Okay. Yes, because I've noticed, Paul. Actually, in this orchard, you've got a lovely red apple. Um, obviously, that helps to sort of create a nice balance when you're harvesting the apples, ready to make the cider. Yeah. Uh, and the the orchard is, it's, it's, uh, as you can see, long biannual orchard. So we uh, at different times uh, throughout the, the, the season or the year over the years I should say these trees will produce more of one variety than another. Right, okay. But we don't make any apologies for it tasting a little bit different. No. I think that's the beauty isn't it about craft ciders that um that they they are not the same every time. And something that's about the beauty about my recipes they don't necessarily taste <laughs> after every, every time, time I cook with them. No. No, That's brilliant. Not, you know, yeah. uh, um, so yeah. what are we doing next, Sue? Right, so what's well, let's, over. let's get back to our I've just turned the apples around again. The the apples here are just caramelising nice and slowly. Okay. And I think that last shower of rain has just cooled my hot plate down a little bit. Things okay. are caramelising as I would, but um, it just could be a little bit hotter. Okay. Um, and I'm going to just have a quick look at the, the port now. Oh, lovely. So we'll open up that open art. That, yep. And you can see it's simmering away. Really lovely. Let's have a look into oh, that. It smells delicious. What actually. do you think of that, Paul? That does look uh, very nice, and I am quite hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so I'm just going to give that. Um, and the beauty about pork tenderloin. It really doesn't take very long to cook, and okay. actually, it's almost better if it's slightly um, on the on the little pink side than overcooked. Okay. Just because of the nature of the, the muscle okay. structure that it is. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this out of, of the pork out and let it just uh, rest for a moment. So just into, these are handy, these dishes, just into a, a dish and, yeah, and that'll just allow it to rest because what we're going to do, I'm going to just try, see if I can just reduce that sauce down a little bit before I add the cream. Okay. It so let's have a look really into it. quite delicious. Okay, so in here, if you've just joined us, is a mixture of leeks and um, mustard. Mustard. And, and of course, the Gaspin Goose cider. Um, cider. If you want a bit more sauce, you could add some chicken stock to it. Okay. But I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. I'm going to just add a few more leeks now to, um, and these are going to just be a little bit more al dente than the other ones. Okay. We've got our apples caramelizing nicely. You can just yeah. see um, bubbling underneath where we put our sugar. Lovely. Um, Turn those apples over. There's a cooking. So we're using our woody slice with that, which is a lovely long handle slice that if you buy um, a cooking set with a fire pit, then it comes with it. Okay. So I don't know, yeah, you can just see it there. The lovely, it's all hand forged in Herefordshire with a beautiful oak handle. So really nice tools to have. Right, so that's just cooking nicely. So what I'll do is I'll how about how are our apples doing inside, Sue? Oh, yeah. Do you Should think? Have a quick look at yeah, them? let's see. Let's think about taking those out. Okay. So we've had those, as we said earlier, just sat in the base of the fire pit. So we, you could put them a little bit on the coals, which we could do now because it's not a ferocious fire. But if you have got a really hot fire, then put them just to the side and they will start to cook. So what have we got? Yeah, oh, those are cooking just nicely they're not quite there yet okay and how do you tell sue so for you know just we're not going to say when they're ready but how we, we, it, do they no need to be time. soft just when they're soft to the touch yeah just okay squidgy so if you open that up just a little bit all oh, right so they are cooking there but yeah you can see not yeah, quite see, ready just not they, okay. even the flesh um the skin starts to just change color a little bit okay when they're cooked. so i'm going to pop that back in okay and i'm going to really put it nestle it into fire. I'm okay. going to just have a little taste of my sauce here just to check on the seasoning. Okay. What's it like? It's very good. Lovely. Okay. Just need to 
Grab it out. You can put some more pepper in there. Like that. It's always important to season your food. So we've got two recipes that we're doing today. We're doing um, pork tenderloin um, with some of Newton Court cider, gasping goose cider. And then and cream is going to go into the cider sauce. Okay, so what does that do to it? That'll just enrich it and give it a really lovely creamy flavour. Okay. And because it's double cream, it's not going to split. So you can boil this and reduce it down if you want to get a really syrupy consistency to your sauce. Smelling good, Paul. Delicious. Yes. <laughs> and it stopped raining. It stopped raining again. <laughs> so you can see the the, the butter, the, sorry, the double cream has melted into the sauce. If you wanted to thicken the sauce and you didn't have the time to reduce it down, you could actually add a little bit of um, uh, corn flour that has been slaked with some water to, to make a, a thicker sauce. Okay. But we're not going to do that today. So that's I'm just going to allow that just to simmer away again and while I do that I shall cut the pork. Oh right okay so okay, let's have a look. Oh, so can you get that's coming there. close. Paul if you hold that. Yeah. I have that. We'll just... Don't lose the meat. <laughs> Okay, and using our beautiful knife again, made by our blacksmith. And you can see it's just still a little bit pink, but by the time I put this now back into our lovely sauce, it will continue to cook. Next bit, I'll just use my fingers now. Cause so, those um, juices can go into the sauce pool. Okay. Oh, chef's mate. I know. So, so, again, yeah, just a little bit pink, but that will just now cook through so beautifully. That will be lovely and tender. We can just hear, that's just coming on nicely, those apples on the fire pit. So, so in they go. And this is one, I say, one fillet of pork. This will feed four people quite easily. Or the three of us. <laughs> With a little spare. So you can see that's just... So again, at this sort of temperature, we're just going to allow that to cook, to cook gently? Cook. Yep. Okay. I'll just turn these apples over again. Quite... Yeah. They're sticky, but they... I think that shower of rain has just... Uh, Filled my hot plate up a little bit, but we are outside in the middle of Herbiture. So, right, I'll put the lid back on for that for a moment. Okay. We'll have a look at our apples. And we'll show you, as we're coming to the end of our time, um, how this is going to look after you've had a look at this one, um, to remind you what we've cooked today. lovely and exciting to open up a parcel that has been cooked on the fire and I'm going to keep it in this bottom layer of foil and this apple is, is really just beautifully cooked let's have a look let's come on over yeah, it's just just soft to the touch oh lovely and and so all that sugar and those um is it raisins you put I'll in put there? I put some raisins and some blackberries right down into the centre of the apple. Okay, so that's going to be yep. an amazing taste. It is. Paul, you can hold that for a moment. And when you're out and about in the fields, I'm just going to pour our butterscotch sauce into a jar. Okay. Lovely thing about butterscotch sauce, this will keep in the fridge for three or four days that's if you um <laughs> if you're so tempted to <laughs> keep going in and having a taste of it. it might not last that long so i'm just going to pour a little bit of that over the top can you see that louise yeah that looks amazing i'll just pop that on my side there and that that is there we can even just have a little black 
blackberries this year are just amazing. Just a few black, extra blackberries on top. So this is a real harvest feast. And that's, that's that. let's have a look. Let's just have one more close with that. Oh, that's lovely. And what a lovely thing, you know, to serve up your guests and your fr friends and family. So, and okay, let's so. We'll have a final look at our, our so, pork. Back to the fire pit. So now we're really cooking on embers. So our our wood has um, burnt down now and so there's just a lovely heat so you can't see any flame with this but it's a lovely heat coming yeah, off it and this is just simmering quite nicely i'm not going to take this out of um this pot but what i'm going to do is just finish it off with some chopped parsley okay or you can put some chopped sage in there i uh, try something different yeah, yeah. Nice look at this finish. lovely color I'll give that a little just stir in just to you can see the lovely leeks on top as well. Okay. You can see the heat coming off that. Yeah. And then the apples. I'll just pop those there. So we haven't taken... Those have just cooked quite nicely. And Beautiful. Finish that with just a little bit of parsley on the top. So just as a reminder, this is our recipe for our woody fire pit for pork tenderloin um, with apples cooked in gasping goose cider from Newton Court Cider. So I think be Paul a pork? Yeah, I think Paul deserves that. I think so, so let's have a look. Do you want to come and I'm have a taste? I am going to come and have a taste. I'll just see if I can get this. Just start digging in. Go, and let's see. And a fork for me. There you go. Let's see what's it like, Paul. All goes for the big yeah, bit. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna have some soup? Oh, oh look at that. I'm gonna just try and get a little tiny bit. Oh, look, at that. look at that. Look at that. Mmm. That is so good. Well, are we gonna try the apple? Are you gonna try and just dig into that apple pork? Mm -hmm. Just have a little go at the baked apple as well. Have a little bit. We well, can have some more of that, but just sit, see for us what our um, what our apple is like. There we go. You might just. What I might just do is just. Uh, can you get in there and pull with it? Go right into the centre. That's it. It's a little bit tricky. There we go. I think Paul's got a customer. <laughs> oh. Oh, and you can see all the well. lovely. Oh God, that's really good. <laughs> thank you, Paul, and thank you, Sue, for a really thank great you, Paul. cookout. Oh, and thank you, Paul. <laughs> we'll be back. Thank you, guys. And. Uh, Take care. So please come and join us for our next live cookout and we'll give details um, again. Um, but in the meantime, Sue and I are going to dig into our lunch. Yes. And we'd like you to try um, a recipe of your own, either this one or another one. And please do send us some pictures. If you hashtag Woody Life on any social media, we'll pick it up and you could win yourself a pair of tickets to Grand Designs Live. Take care. Bye bye.